Discontented Media presents Dr. Bitcoin, the man who wasn't Satoshi Nakamoto, an original podcast series with Mark Hunter and Arthur Van Pelt. Hello and welcome to Dr. Bitcoin, the man who wasn't Satoshi Nakamoto and a special, very special episode that Arthur and I didn't think we'd be doing for another three months at least. But circumstances have dictated that we are recording tonight on the day that Craig Wright's Satoshi claim finally breathed its last dying breath. With me as usual to go through all the events of the day is Arthur Van Pelt. But Arthur, before we get into any details here, this has just been one extraordinary afternoon, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, you can say that again. That uh, <laughs> uh, sort of emotional for me, in in a sense, uh, the, the, the expected, and in, in another sense, some yeah, emotional also. Mm-hmm. So, for those of you who staggeringly may not be aware of what happened today we can officially say without fear of lawsuit at least from my perspective in the uk that craig (laughs) wright is not satoshi nakamoto and had nothing to do with the creation of bitcoin that is the ruling that came down in a, a shock ruling that came down earlier on today in the caper versus Wright case a ruling we were expecting months down the line it's both shocking and not shocking at the same time. Um, so yeah. obviously, Arthur and I are going to discuss this now. Um, I've no idea what's going to happen with this podcast. It could be an absolute shambles because we're still a little bit giddy from from what's been going on. <laughs> now, Arthur, my wife didn't let me use up the champagne for this um, because she's a muggle, so she doesn't quite understand what's going on in this world. So I've managed to procure myself a, a fantastically um, elegant British cider, which I'm just going to crack open now. in in celebration of this fantastic event. So please excuse me for a second while I just pour myself a nice, hopefully you can get a nice, nice glug there, a nice British cider just to, just to toast what's happened today. Um, So yeah, I mean, where, where shall we even start? I mean, today was the final day of closing submissions. And I think we all thought as it appeared for most of the day, it was going to be a quite staid affair, quite procedural, bit of back and forth, and that Justice Miller was going to say, thanks very much, I'll get back to you a few months down the line. And he did that. And I think a lot of people, me included, were about to shut their laptops down and then go off and do something else for the next three months. Um, And then what happened next? Yeah, um, we are uh, sort of lucky. We have this Dropbox uh, where we can find all the um, uh, many of the filings, the skeletons, the, the forensic expert reports, etc. And uh, COPA was uh, uh, already uh, they, they, they had their hands. I, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not sure who is doing that, but they dropped the last words of uh, the, 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 the the final part of the transcript of today. They dropped already there. Of course, there have been I'm not sure how many, but we heard numbers of around uh, more than 900 uh, over the course of the lawsuit have been uh, uh, sorry of the trial have been listening in so probably everybody mm-hmm. was listening uh, today um, but yeah now we could uh, uh, exactly see what uh, Mr. Justice Meller said no, I'm gonna take it here I'm gonna have I'm have it on the screen I, w- I will read it for you sure uh, of course for the listener uh, uh, mostly Mr. Justice Meller thank you Well, I thank all the parties for their written closing and oral arguments, and they've been very helpful indeed. They will require me to prepare a fairly lengthy written uh, judgment, which will be handed down in due course. So he's not making an estimation. Mm -hmm. And for all those who have already been hassling my clerk as to when the judgment will be ready, the (laughs) short answer is as follows. It will be ready when it's ready and not Mm -hmm. before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. However, having considered all the evidence and submissions presented to me in this trial, I've reached the conclusion that the evidence is overwhelming. 
And here we go. Therefore, for the reasons which will be explained in the written judgment in due course, I will make certain declarations which I am satisfied are useful and are necessary to do justice between the parties. First, that Dr. Wright is not the author of the Bitcoin white paper. Second, Dr. Wright is not the person who adopted or operated under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto in the period 2008 to 2011. Third, Dr. Wright is not the person who created the Bitcoin system. And fourth, he is not the author of the initial versions of the Bitcoin software. Any further relief will be dealt with uh, in my written judgment. I will extend time for filing any appellant's notice until 21, uh, 21 days after the form of order hearing, which will be appointed following the hand down of my written judgment, and I ask the parties to seek to agree an order giving effect to what I have just stated. So I am afraid, for any further information, you'll have to wait for the written judgment. And that was what he said before the yeah. whole session was closed. Yeah, this is, um, this. I mean, <laughs> the weird thing is, Mark, for me, this is not uh, really unexpected because this is what I've been saying for, well, since 2019, so for five years already. Mm -hmm. This is not a surprise. On the other hand, to see it written down by a judge in every angle that you can think of, that you are like, wow, <laughs> the, the guy has indeed, as I, as I, as I and yeah, you also, of course, have been saying for so long that before 2011, he had nothing to do with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And you see it written down in an, in an ruling, in, an, in, an, um, in a case where it matters. Yeah, it, it, it did something to me. And, and I'm, I'm not sure what, what the right word for it is. It's, it's sort of relief. It's a sort of... Uh, we can shut it down. On the other hand, there's a lot of things uh, coming towards us. We have been discussing uh, a book, etc., and, and other things. But yeah, for the moment, this is like wow, wow. Mm. Yeah, it was. I, I think for everyone uh, on our side, shall we say, it wasn't the verdict that was the shock because this was the verdict. Like you say, we were expecting. It was the fact that it came so soon. And yeah. the manner in which it came, like nobody expected it to arrive in this way. Um, no. You know, it was, it really was kind of out of the blue. It, 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 we all thought it was just, he was just going to wind down and that was going to be it. And then in, in, in a few months we would hear uh, what we, what we heard, but to have him come out with it and say it just like that, it was like a drive by. It was like, is this really happening? And I mean, it's interesting that you, reacted in that way and I, I totally understand why you did I mean I reacted like my football team had scored like Man United had just scored a winning goal in the, in the cup final I was jumping around my office I was like oh my god th this is it like it, I was trying to make it sink in that as you say the the amount of work we've done and, and you've done more work than me on this but then what we've done together and, and and independently um suddenly like out of the blue it had all all paid off and it was just such a shock that it was there in front of us when we were, we'd yeah. waited for so long um yeah so i mean yeah there 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 is a lot to unpack but also not a lot to unpack because obviously we haven't got the written ruling so we can't go through like the 20 forgeries you know and which ones he said were which ones weren't or what have you so we're just gonna have to go with our like immediate reaction and and, and try and work out what it might mean down the line so uh yeah i mean looking at it, it it's 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 huge it's absolutely huge and i think I, I wonder if the verdict coming in 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 any form really kind of crystallizes what we've been hoping for and working for and it's like wow like he might this might actually be the end of him which is i know that's what we wanted but it seems like it's kind of unreal doesn't it yeah yeah it, it, it. It's almost like it, this is too good, too fast. So I'm mm. pinching myself also for a little bit. But uh, nah, they, but it, I mean, we've already seen so many uh, responses. It's, it has already reached uh, the press, uh, uh, mm. the media uh, here and there. Uh, we already, I'm already uh, uh, browsing through the responses of uh, the BSV uh, fan club. <laughs> which are here and there quite interesting. Oh, I bet uh, they are. I will, <laughs> I will mention a few. 
Yes, we'll come to the reactions from both sides in due course. But I think the first thing that really took everyone by surprise was the fact that the ruling came today. It was just such a out of the blue situation. But it's one that makes a lot of sense when you consider that he's got a massive long report to write that includes his examination of all the evidence and the independent 20 forgeries he's got to rule on as well with regard to the, the forgery uh, the, the forgery claims. And there's all these other trials, as we'll come on to, resting on this. So it actually makes absolute sense that he took the decision that he took to announce it now. It makes it even more sense in a way that he did that because it's going to be so long to write. So the fact that he said, you know what, I'll just make it easy for you now. He he is not Satoshi there. You've got that. Now I'll go and do my report. And it just it just undermines any like any 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 um nerves anyone had, any potential issues legally down the line for other cases. They're mm. they're all dispensed with. It's just it was a really, really good move, uh, as as far as that goes. Absolutely. The reason why or how he was able to come to the decision so soon, I found that fascinating because if you think about it, um, I mean, I mentioned it on Twitter and I may um, may have mentioned it on, a, on a, a podcast, I'm not sure, maybe it was too early, but the last few days, I mean, I was at the trial yesterday, but the last few days watching it online and then being there yesterday, I just got the feeling that I, I, I compared the barristers to a bunch of school teachers who are close to the end of the school year. They're a bit demob happy. They're like, they're just laughing and joking, lots of hijinks. You and the judge as well. Even he was having a laugh and a joke with them about about mm. oh you know thank God this is going to be over. And I was like, you don't you wouldn't normally get that in in a trial if there was any and anything on the line because there was no tension. There was no which way is this going to go. They all had this aura that it was already decided that and yeah. and they all knew what the result was. And of course we we've been saying the same thing, but we're just lay people. We we're not privy to what goes on inside. We're not experienced like they are. But you just no. got the impression that, like, even Lord Grabener was just phoning it in. He was having a right laugh and a joke about things. And you, you you factor that with the early judgment. And you kind of think, at what point, firstly, did he make up his mind on Craig Wright? And at what point did the lawyers, like, twig um, that that he'd made his mind up? Um, because, I mean, I, if, if Justice Meller hadn't already decided before the trial... And he may already have had a very strong leaning one way or the other for obvious reasons that we've discussed in previous episodes. But I get the feeling that he thought, I'm going to give this guy a chance on the stand to combat these claims and then I'll make my call from there. So I think he saw Craig on the stand, he was not impressed and he made his mind up pretty sure that the witnesses weren't going to make any difference because he'd seen their testimonies already. And yeah. then... You had Craig being brought back on the stand for the email forgery. But I think by that point, he'd already made his mind up. What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I, exactly uh, exactly the same. I mean, the moment that um, if you look at the whole process, even months and months and months before the trial, when it became... Um, now, yeah, when we became more aware of what was going on, we learned more about uh, the filings. We learned about... Uh, the website Bitcoin Defense, uh, dot, dot org, I think it is, where we could find those filings that started already uh, last year, in, in I think in summer, when we became more aware of that. Uh, and, and, and we could start reading in on, on what was happening. We learned about uh, the first Madden report, that it was massive massive 900 almost 1000 pages mm. uh, hundreds and hundreds of forgeries found yeah <laughs> we are not surprised but on the other hand it also says a lot of what is going on they are really keen to nail this guy down mm. uh, that was the impression that we could now uh, finally give uh, somebody uh, that we would like uh, we like um, yeah, COPA is not not uh, taking things for granted. They certainly are not. And um, then we learned about uh, the second and the third and the fourth rounds of uh, of forgeries that Craig Wright tried to bring in. We learned about uh, that uh, Justice Meller in July had said that uh, for this joint trial, 
uh, Craig Wright is not the defendant, he is the claimant. And that was uh, uh, for many, for a long while, a bit of a shock to learn because that makes a an, um, an, an person... Uh, you put a person in trial in an, in a lawsuit in a different position if you are a claimant then you have to start proving something instead of leaning back and uh, let the things come to you and and debunk it that is a, that is a well a quite different position i even saw people today bsv supporters today who still thought that craig was the was the uh, the defendant in the case yeah even to this day they still thought that and i'm like come on guys what have you been watching now, I, I see it as the, the, that was exactly the reason uh, that it uh, instead of uh, Craig Wright leaning back and let uh, uh, Copa come with their proof and evidence that he is not Satoshi, uh, it, it was the other way around. That's why you see mm -hmm. saw Craig uh, struggle with uh, several rounds of uh, of, uh, of of evidence and <laughs> and six in. <laughs> In total, six rounds of debunks of uh, of of, uh, of Copa uh, with uh, Madden, and then I do not even include yet the um, the joint statements with all the, uh, the 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 forensic experts, because there was also uh, there were six Madden reports, and there were three joint statements of uh, the forensic experts of Craig Wright together with the forensic experts of. Uh, of Copa, with uh, Madden being the, the lead uh, in that, and they all took the side of uh, yeah, this is uh, this looks like uh, yeah, willingly created uh, forgeries, and uh, of course the experts of uh, Craig Wright will not say that Craig Wright is responsible. That is uh, Madden's uh, and Copa's uh, job <laughs> to do, and yeah, mm -hmm. that is uh, that is how it uh, how it turned out. So in, in the run up to the to the trial. We learned about the planning, we learned about uh, how uh, the things would uh, uh, start to pan out, how, uh, who was when on the stand. And we noticed that uh, they would take a, a massive amount of time, I think seven, more than seven days, seven, eight days, seven and a half, something days uh, for Craig Wright on the stand. Then uh, the expert witnesses, the, the fact witnesses, and... Um, uh, at the end, of course, the closing uh, the closing submissions. But what was really cool was, especially during trial, was that we learned about a uh, Dropbox where Copa would immediately and rather quickly, at some uh, in some cases, would drop uh, information uh, that uh, the audience could enjoy and um, yeah, uh, learn about in detail what was going on during trial, and that worked uh, the same as uh, what we uh, know from uh, the United States of America, where they have a court listener website, where you also can find uh, the filings. Mm -hmm. So this was a um, yeah, very enjoyable uh, process to, uh, to follow. In, in one, in, for me, at least, for, in one hand, it was a, well, sort of boring, because you know already that uh, it's not going to be very different from uh, the climate trial, and especially... Uh, what happened in Oslo in in Norway in uh, 2022 with uh, um, Yeah, On the other hand, uh, the numbers became bigger and um, the tension was, uh, was uh, of course, uh, more, even more there than um, in, uh, in, in, in Oslo uh, two years ago, one and a half year ago, because the, here it was really about the the ruling are you satoshi or not are you uh, having copyright or not did you uh, have the source code or did you create the source code of uh, did you write a white paper etc all the things that matter that was now uh, the main thing to rule about now we got what we wanted today yeah i think it it, it was such a a big case this is the th the thing that's going to sh the surprise me as well it was such a huge case in terms of the scale, the scope, the importance of it—I mean, at, at least from from our from our perspective—and mm. you you almost ex well, you you did expect because it was such a huge case that there was going to be this dramatic pause, this dramatic wait for a few months while we all debated what might happen, and then it drops and you dissect it, and I, I think it, it almost like demanded that that sort of period of tension, and to have the rug whipped away from him with that with such speed 
I think that must have been quite galling because it just showed that things like the, the, the closing arguments were almost pointless because he'd made his mind up. Um, you know, there, there was so much of it that had already, that was almost irrelevant in the case because of what had gone before it. Um, you know, just it, it, it's that's the thing that surprises me is it's like, oh, OK, well, it's done. It was just, it's really, it's really surprising, but um, obviously exciting and, and, and joyous all the same. Um, and it's funny you should mention the Hodlinot trial because, I mean, let, let's, let's track it back. He's now started, he started his lawsuits back in 2019. Vitalik Buterin never went anywhere. Adam Back never went anywhere. Peter McCormack, I mean... There's still a debate of whether he won or lost that, but you know he won one pound and shredded his um, his his reputation. Mm. He lost against Hodlinort. He has now lost this one, the big one, uh, and all this talk of five D chess and all the rest of it. It just shows that what we've been saying all these years, the the the, the Craig Wright story, the Craig Wright narrative, the world he's built for himself, this this insular cult he's built for himself, just it was never going to be able to withstand the real world. Where I mean, again, I, I tweeted out again this evening that that speech, the little rant he gave at Oxford University, where he's talking about the real world and evidence. Um, his, yeah. It was never, it was never going to stand up to that. And again, we have to go back to this thing of what did he expect to happen when he was creating these forgeries, the first round of forgeries, the second round of forgeries, the forged email in February. What was going through his mind when he did that? Like, did he really think he was going to win? Um, but again, the, these are these are questions we've gone back and forth on so many times, and we're, we're never going to get an answer. But it just shows that with each with each court case that goes on, he gets worse and worse, and the verdicts are more and more damaging, aren't they? It, it, it's like he hasn't learned along the way, and no. with every lawsuit, it's the outcome has been worse for him. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, for me, the question is especially, um, I mean, when, when, when Meller is uh, uh, literally saying, um, I've reached the conclusion that the evidence is overwhelming, Mm. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that means that my question is also then, what are, the, what are his fans? What have they been thinking? This has been, um, the evidence has always been overwhelming that he has been fooling around, that he has been forging, that he has been uh, trying to create a history that he has never been part of and he mingled himself in it but it was always now uh, when i say it politically correct uh, it's cringe but when it is uh, less politically correct it was just completely false and contradictory uh, contradictory to uh, to what satoshi wanted what he said what he wa uh, his visions his instructions so many times, not just one or two little slip-ups. No, it are literally dozens of slip-ups. And if you look at it properly, it you could see this coming. You could see this coming. And like you said, it was a like a like a sliding like a uh, sliding is that called sliding scale or something? When some uh, somebody is going downhill, and this was going downhill into the direction that everybody could have seen if you paid proper attention but yeah, still with um, uh, when you look at uh, the responses on uh, on on, uh, on on twitter on, on the social mm -hmm. media is that until the last minute even before the few minutes before justice meller brought this bombshell ruling uh, to the to the courtroom there that people are still like yeah nee, the madden report will be uh, will <laughs> yes. be will be kicked out exactly. because yeah. uh, 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 lord uh, grabber has been um, he he pointed out that uh, that madden uh, what what was the big point there the the independence of madden was um, uh, uh, com com i think yeah compromised is the is the good word yeah um, yeah because he has been working together with an assistant from uh, from Bird and Bird, the, the lawyer firm, and uh, they have been writing the report together, or Bird and Bird has been writing it, and he has only been signing it off. 
I was like, <laughs> that's not a big thing. Is because that the best you've got? Now, yeah, we, of course, you don't know everything what is in and different. For me, the UK is a different jurisdiction, so you don't know everything, of course, and you can only make mm. try to make sense of what people are saying. But for me, it totally did not make any sense that if you have not... An, he's, a, he's a lone wolf, eh, this, uh, this Madden guy. He has his own um, uh, bureau, his own uh, right right click forensics or something mm -hmm. so he is yeah. he is uh, and and he he is not working with an assistant or something and he didn't want to he preferably didn't want to but then you have to uh, due to the time constraints due to the massive amount of forgeries that he had to go through due to the massive amount of text that he had to write and keep it professional uh, of course you you need somebody who is uh, uh, assisting you but if you have to uh, First, you have to hire somebody for such a massive job. You have to find a uh, professional that can help you. You have to train that person on the job. You have to make him aware of what you want for with your report. You have to check back with Bert and Bert anyway uh, for your report because it has to uh, have the, the right um, legal language that everybody understands, especially uh, Justice Meller. So it, mm -hmm. it, it that will be very time consuming for him. So for me, it made total sense that if uh, Bird and Bird is having an, 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 no, yeah, a professional assistant for him that is helping him shuffle the text in the right order uh, and leave all the all the debunks, uh, of course, to uh, to Madden and all the text uh, to him also, but only help him to uh, to to create an uh, an, an report. Yeah, is is that uh, allowed in in England? Nou ja, I did not really doubt that it would be a, a big issue. On the other hand, uh, it was mentioned quite uh, quite a few times by uh, by the BSV fans that uh, yeah, nee, now the report will be uh, kicked uh, out of the courtroom and uh, it will not be important. So Craig Wright is going to win because now no forgeries will be on his name anymore. And I was like, yeah, but that, that is That's desperate. The, that yeah desperate it it's so impossible that for such an for me at least as an outsider a technical a, a small technicality that a full report making um uh, uh the, the 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 courtroom aware of over 500 forgeries that are supported by other uh, experts, uh, forensic experts in joint statements. I was like, yeah, I cannot imagine that because uh, Bird and Bird has been helping him not with the text, not with the findings, not with the debunks, that is all Madden's work, but they gave him the opportunity to use uh, their office to uh, discuss the reports and uh, especially fine-tune the reports in an in an uh, in a uh, format that uh, that would work in uh, in court. Yeah, for me that was quite understandable because when you work for somebody, you can also uh, within limits work with somebody. So I, I did not see really the, the issue. Well, yeah, and it looked I mean, like that I was right. Well, the thing is as well. Do these people really think that a law firm of the size and reputation of Bird and Bird is going to risk their entire case by writing a report for a forensic expert in the hope they won't get found out and knowing that that forensic expert is going to have to defend his claims on the stand? Do they really think they're going to put themselves in that position? I, but again, this, this though speaks to the mindset because like you say, I mean, literally in the minutes before... Uh, Justice Miller dropped that, that bombshell. I was speaking to someone on, on Twitter who was saying to me, oh yeah, but don't you realise the Madden report's going to be dismissed? And I said, it's, I said, no, what you're, what you're saying is that Craig's team have brought up a point that the judge will have to take into consideration. There's been no decision made on it yet. You might think that, but the other side has got another opinion and it hasn't been ruled on yet. And then just a few minutes later, it was it was made irrelevant anyway. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. But there seems to be, I mean, we never claimed to be um, legal experts. You know, when something came up that we weren't sure of, we either said we weren't sure or we tried to we tried to do some research to see what, what we could find. The difference between a lot on the other side is that 
they see something and they just run with it. Oh, well, that means our oh, cope is dead. Madden's report is dead. No, it doesn't mean that. There's no further thought that goes into it. There's no there's no looking from the other side. There's no yeah. deeper thought process, and w- which is not a surprise right. when you consider the other nonsense conspiracy theories they've come up with, both before the trial and now, uh, to, to explain certain things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, like I think we said before, we're not impartial, but if you look at the body of evidence and the way it's been constructed and you take what you take everything that was known last September with that first Madden report and you you factor in the LaTeX files the way they were totally destroyed you factor in the Myob email in February yeah. it doesn't take a genius to know that that was all fake because the alternative like they said in closing and they said many times during the trial the alternative is to believe every single one of Craig Wright's stories. You have to believe all of them to believe he's telling the truth. Mm. And if you're willing to believe all those, then I'm not surprised that you're believing that it's all a conspiracy and the judge has been bought out, you know, um, bought off and this sort of thing. So I, I, I do think it, it speaks to the mindset when people are arguing those sort of technical points and thinking that they're these massive, these massive wins when it's like, no guys, come on take a step back and look at the bigger picture but then cults don't look at the bigger picture do they no 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 it is for them when uh, the moment uh craig wright is um now yeah, a sort of a jesus figure everything he says is true by definition that means yeah. that the moment somebody uh, the, the 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 council of uh uh, Hof and, uh, and, and Gunning say something to him and the moment he answers he already wins because he said something and they yeah. don't look at the it's context they true. don't look at the, con- the context and the content uh, the, the content and the context of that context uh, sorry of that uh, content uh, <laughs> which <laughs> blah, blah, blah. you have been drinking <laughs> <laughs> not yet I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop one but I was waiting for it for uh, for after this uh, to be fair I do have an, okay. uh, an uh, brut uh, uh, in in my wine rack uh, that I was uh, I'm I'm peeking at it as as we speak, but no I I no I I wanted to um, uh, not to get too drunk because I uh, I'm I'm not really a dr- big alcohol drinker so the moment I drink I uh, get tipsy quite fast, <laughs> so I did want it for this. Um, for this broadcast very, anyway. very professional of you ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, they, and that is the same when uh, uh, that uh, grabbing a guy when he is saying something about Madden that he puts the uh, the professionality of Bird and Bird uh, uh, at, uh, at 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 the stake of his words. Or, or, or how do you say that uh, when he is making uh, he's trying to make uh, Meller aware that something shady might have been going on in the in the professional handling of the of the debunks. Uh, the forensic debunks uh, and and how to write it down that it was Bird and Bird who were making the um, now the funny thing is today there was this very specific moment that um, um, oh my god what happened um, I think it was Hoff saying it he said something that was the tweet that I did oh yeah that's oh, it's already eight hours ago um, when I mentioned in a tweet, one point professionally killed. Hoff said, there is no freestanding basis to say that Bird and Bird influenced the work of Mr. Madden. And the funny thing is, he was uh, talking and uh, uh, Mr. Grabener was interrupting during the, the, the what he was saying at that moment. And he said, I made no allegation against the solicitors of Bird and Bird. Now, then you have the point, and that was what Hoff picked up immediately, so we can conclude together that Madden, his independence, was not compromised. Because that is the only logical conclusion. If Bird and Bird, who, was, who has been part of that well, yeah, compromise, so to say, um, if, they were not, uh, uh, if there were no allegations against these solicitors, yeah, then you have no allegations to um, Madden either. 
logically. Dat was voor mij de 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 big point. En dat uh, was for, uh, how I noticed that it was a rather clever way of Hof to make sure what um, Grabner. Uh, I'm not sure if he uh, wanted to be uh, trapped like that or it was a trick of Hoff to uh, to trap him like that or just to make sure that uh, Meller, uh, just as Meller would also pick up the point that there was no big thing going on uh, and Grabener just had to uh, affirm that one more time. I have no idea how that works and how these... People, but I can imagine that also Grabner thinks uh, we cannot make a big point of this because if I want to, if I want to make a big point of it, then I have to go against uh, Bird and Bird and their professionality, and and that was not the type of big point that they were making, uh, or they could not make because it 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 was just you know, too small for it. If it was a big if it was a big point, yeah. then I would have expected that uh, already during trial already. No, probably uh, uh, after straight after that Madden was uh, cross-examined. No, that was somewhere halfway the trial, I think. Um, when was that? Two weeks ago, I think. In, pre- in the previous week on, on Monday. Then I would have expected already, but at the end of the day, that there would be an, an, a sort of a motion from Grabener, or the, at least uh, from Craig's side, that uh, Madden should be kicked from uh, from the whole uh, trial or from uh, from from the lawsuit because he had been uh, not been conducting in, in a professional way. Yeah, nothing of that happened. Yeah, of course, of course they would. Because can you imagine if they had evidence that Bird and Bird had colluded with Patrick Madden to produce a, no. a false report? Like you've got to, you, firstly, you've got to have some pretty damn strong evidence to make those allegations, and secondly, they are huge allegations to make against the firm that's litigating like at that time. And what did we get? We got a little bit of a chatter back and forth about how he wrote the report, and then there was pretty much nothing from then on. A little bit in closing, like you say, but that was quickly kind of stamped out. But again, the BSV crowd just ran with it and assumed it was all true and it was all blown up out of, out of massive proportion when really the sensible thing to do, as you say, would have been to look at it and say, well, hang on a second. If this was true, would we not be expecting something more here? But again, this goes back to the whole signing a block thing, the whole stenography yeah. watermarks thing, all this stuff that was supposed to be various renditions of um of mm. uh, bombshell monday mm. again and again and again that never came up because they're little tidbits again like you say it's like jesus little little pearls of wisdom scattered here and there that are picked up on and blown mm. out of all proportion and are just assumed to be true and then nothing ever comes f- comes of it and they just forget about it and move on to the next one um it's just it's the way it's always been um Let's let's move on to the reactions because we, we we've covered what Justice Miller said and kind of how he probably came to that decision. So I'll I'll go through what what Coper said because Coper tweeted um, about three or four hours after the verdict came in, and they said Justice Miller found that number one, Dr. Wright is not the author of the Bitcoin white paper. Number two, Dr. Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto. Number three, Dr. Wright is not the person who created the Bitcoin system. And number four, Dr. Wright is not the author of the initial versions of the Bitcoin software. This decision is a win for developers, for the entire open source community and for the truth. For over eight years, Dr. Wright and his financial backers have lied about his identity as Satoshi Nakamoto and used that lie to bully and intimidate developers in the Bitcoin community. That ends today with the court's ruling that Craig Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto. And, I mean, you you don't get more succinct and on point than that, do you? No, no. And, and yeah, don't forget, this uh, is also a ruling that um, has quite the consequences because this is a joint trial of several uh, several cases. Yes. And... Let's yeah, go through yeah, that yeah. now. So, so, so what... So, let's talk about the... Let's talk about the knock-on effect to this because this wasn't the only... Uh, trial that was uh, related to this. So tell us about the impact this will have on the other cases. We have uh, three halted uh, cases uh, by Justice Meller himself uh, that are uh, one passing off case uh, against Kraken, one passing off case against Coinbase, and of course uh, the infamous uh, copyright uh, 
de, 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 de white paper copyright, source code copyright, de database uh, uh, rights en de file format uh, copyright case. Dat is uh, also een combined case against several parties where Craig is claiming uh, to have uh, all, those, uh, all those copyrights on, uh, on things. Now, those three cases were halted because they were also based on, uh, on the identity of, uh, of him, that he is uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. And just as Meller said, uh, no, we're going to halt those cases. We're going to bring everything under one umbrella. Uh, we're going to uh, leave uh, two joint parties, the Bitcoin developers and COPA. They join forces. They become... Um, uh, in, in this case, the defendant uh, for this trial. And uh, mm -hmm. th yeah, they're going to struggle about uh, what is called uh, the identity issue. And um, uh, meanwhile, we halt those other three cases. But we know already beforehand that if Craig Wright is winning, he will continue with those cases. But uh, when he is not winning the identity issue, then uh, those three cases uh, can be considered uh, lost for, uh, for Craig Wright also. Now, and then also we have, of course, uh, two other halted cases. They are around uh, hodl -Naut. It does not mean that he automatically wins at the moment. Uh, the, the, the still have to no, yeah, look into that, uh, I'm quite sure. But on the other hand, uh, they also mm -hmm. depend on the identity case, uh, sorry, of the of uh, Craig Wright's identity as, um, uh, as Satoshi or not, because there is this uh, truth uh, defense that, uh, or the reverse truth defense in uh, in, in Norway, that uh, Hodlnaut is uh, having about the identity of uh, Craig Wright. As, uh, now, yeah, so this is massively in his uh, advantage uh, to um, to the Norway case oh, yeah. where Craig Wright has appealed the, the, the decision, the first decision, where it was decided that uh, indeed uh, it was not very likely that he is Satoshi and there has not been no uh, no libel. No, and that is what uh, Craig Wright has appealed in Norway. It, that was halted. Now, in the same type of case, but the other way around, Craig Wright against Hodlnot in, uh, in the UK is also running, but halted, waiting for the outcome of, uh, of this case. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this will also be in, uh, in Hodlnot's um, advantage, uh, of course, how it practically is going to pan out, uh, we don't know yet, because it depends on um, mm -hmm. what is uh, going to happen in, uh, in, in, in the final ruling of, uh, of Mellor in, uh, in this case. Now, then we have also still the, the pineapple hack, uh, the one fix, uh, fiduciary duty uh, case, that does mm -hmm. not really, really depend on... Um, uh, on the identity of uh, of uh, uh, Craig Wright being Satoshi or not. On the other hand, uh, there is an element, and I was not aware of that, uh, to be fair, uh, and I became aware of that uh, uh, rather recently, that if the Tulip Trust uh, is uh, being declared in uh, this case as an, no, yeah, an, an, an non-existing vehicle, <laughs> not having any, no, yeah, that, that will mm -hmm. be automatically a ruling that will that will follow now. It it, it will be mentioned. It is uh, it has been mentioned during the closing submissions. Yeah. So I'm sure Meller is going to say something yeah. about it. That uh, if uh, uh, Craig Wright has not been mining, then <laughs> automatically the Tulip Trust <laughs> does not have any assets, and uh, it is a an, an, an non-existing uh, vehicle of. Uh, uh, now, yeah, then a non-existing vehicle that is trying to obtain uh, uh, one fix and, and 12 IB7, those two addresses, uh, the, yeah, they don't even have that. So that will have a direct influence on that case also. Uh, yeah, because that, that, that came up in closing, didn't it? Because um, Justice Miller said, I forget who pointed it out, it may have been Justice Miller himself who said, um, you know, one of the findings I, I might make is on the existence or not of the Tulip Trust. And that obviously yeah. has a bearing on the other case. And should I be finding a ruling on that? And he went to both parties. And Alexander Gunning, who, of course, is, is the KC for the developers, was like, we, we really would rather you did make a finding <laughs> on that because he yeah. knows full well what finding yes. is going to be made on that. So he's like, if you, can, if you can please make a finding on that, it will save us a lot of time and yep. money in the future. So... Um, even even though for the whole time this case has been running, 
there has been no direct connection between this case and the tulip trading case there is obviously in in that finding now a potential to massively impact that case which which could be great news for yep. the developers yep. in that case yep. as well and which and let's let's not forget who's overseeing the tulip trading case justice meller so you know he already knows craig wright's history and of course he's not allowed to take into account any previous dealings but you know he's going to find it hard not to when it, when he's faced with that um the other thing as well you mentioned the hold not trial is interesting because let's let's fast forward a bit and say that okay those trials go ahead let's say craig in sit, tries to push through with either one or, or both of those cases he can't bring the evidence that he brought last time mm -hmm. because that was debunked he can't bring the evidence he brought to the Copa case because that would have been destroyed by then. So can you even conceive of what new evidence he could come up with for that new trial? What is left that he could concoct for a new Hodenot trial that would not be instantly dismissed? I, I both... I both would love to know and would just hate to know what would be going through his mind if he even dared to pursue those cases. Yeah, yeah. we can only uh, we can only guess. But from from now onward, it, uh, I expect things to go downhill so fast. <laughs> Hold on. <Yeah. laughs> I, but, but, but by the way, well, just, just, I mean, just in between, I, I was looking at, yeah. at Twitter. I passed mm. uh, uh, Michael Saylor. Uh, we know, all know him. Craig Wright is not Satoshi. He also yes. tweeted about it. He already he already had I more than twenty thousand likes on the tweet. My goodness! My goodness! <laughs> Let's actually run through because you've mentioned him. So let's just run through a couple of the uh, a couple of the other notable people that have that have commented before we move on to how kind of where things go from here. So and we mentioned the passing off cases. Kraken tweeted to say we are all Satoshi except Craig Wright, and they referred to a Fortune uh, online story. Uh, you also had um, Paul, uh, Paul Gruol, Gr Gruol, Gruol, who is the Coinbase legal. Chief. Yeah. He says, Mr. Wright is not Satoshi. The court has just ruled definitively and without qualification. We are grateful that the rule of law has again prevailed. Yeah. Um, e Edward Snowden replied to a Hodenort tweet just saying, welcome to law. <laughs> the famous line, of <laughs> yeah, course. Yeah. Um, so there's actually been a few more people than I knew were even remotely interested in this case yeah. that actually piped up. And, I, and it's kind of gratifying, actually, to know that these people were aware of this case and 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 knew a bit about it do you know what i mean yeah yeah and, and the same for example uh, i just passed because when i was quickly uh, looking at uh, sailor but i also passed for example uh, jack dorsey and he, he also uh, mm -hmm. he quote um uh, uh the, the, yeah, yeah the most interesting part of the of the ruling that uh, meller has been saying and uh, he put an <laughs> a w on top of uh, win <laughs> i will make certain declarations which i am satisfied are useful and are necessary to do justice between the parties first the dr wright is not the author of the bitcoin white paper no yeah etc etc uh what i mm -hmm. mentioned earlier so he is quoting um now also uh, almost ten thousand likes uh, already so yeah this is uh, yeah this is this is massive and uh what i wanted to say th is. this will go downhill now quickly because we talked about that he's going to lose several other cases but imagine we are not even talking about what are the class action suits that are coming what are the damages that people are going to try to um uh, yeah get uh, fulfillment for when uh, not only his fan club but also people that have been doing business with BSV, that have been doing business with Craig mm -hmm. Wright, that have been doing business with Calvin Air. I also expect uh, Calvin Air, it, it won't take long before Calvin Air is on the line for, no, yeah, legal actions. Uh, the, the, of course, I cannot predict really what is going to happen, but th this is this is not just a simple identity case that is uh, falling into the uh, for Craig right then into the wrong direction. This has a lot of consequences for everything that he has been doing for ten years now. I mean, his scam, his his Craig, uh, his uh, Satoshi scam started in 2014, 
and um, the ATO is still on him. Uh, uh, then when he came uh, uh, with the help of Calvin Air and uh, first in uh, BCH and then creating BSV, it was all, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, his, his, his brainchild is, uh, has been built around his uh, yeah, spiritual uh, leadership. It, it changes a lot now. I think we are not done with this yet. We will see, um, no, yeah, I mean, probably quite interesting things happening in, uh, in the upcoming weeks and months, and especially when, uh, mm-hmm. when the ruling of uh, Mellor is coming and he makes, um, no, probably not, not just indications. He will, uh, he will probably uh, play uh, the man and the ball with, uh, with the amounts that he thinks that uh, people should get into... Um, yeah, the damages. What what is it called? In injunctions and relief and I don't know how mm-hmm. it's called in uh, in the UK. Relief, yeah, no. yeah, because they it, it depends what you're looking for. But in terms of monetary payments, that would be relief, no. and then there could be an injunction against him to prevent him from taking the action that he wants to to take. He threatens to keep taking, and in fact, that that leads me on nicely to the final point I wanted to talk on uh, talk about, which is when the ruling does come down um what are the chances that we go the stage further and we move to the criminal action side of things because i i think if justice meller had waited the full three to four months for his ruling and had then decided you know we might have got some sort of referral to the department uh, 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 public prosecutions uh, in terms of the fraud and the fraud upon the court and the perjury but I just think the fact that he said the evidence, the fact that he ruled so soon, the fact that he said the evidence was overwhelming suggests to me that he um, is more likely than he perhaps would have been or or more likely than perhaps we thought to pursue criminal charges because he clearly feels there has been a severe uh, fraud perpetrated by Craig Wright. The fact that he used the word overwhelming, I think, is key here. Mm he thinks that serious damage has been done and i am more convinced than i was before at at any other point in this trial i'm more convinced now that he will recommend a criminal prosecution Mm. and just to give you an idea because it doesn't often happen in the uk uh because people aren't usually that stupid but there have been a couple of cases where people have been called out for perjury perverting the course of justice the kind of things that copa wants Mm. and these have ended up in in jail time from between 18 months to five years now those all the cases i i did i did the research on that i found all these cases about five or six the highest profile ones that i found so between between 18 months and, and five years for one episode for one little bit of lying one lie cost them that much Mm. so if he's saying the evidence is overwhelming and he thinks that craig roach has perpetrated multiple frauds on the court Mm. i don't want to speak too soon i don't want to be overly dramatic or hyperbolic but he could be in in serious legal trouble here down the line i mean i mean serious trouble Mm. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 without any doubt, the, the, the numbers are, are mind blowing. The, the forensic reports uh, contain over 500 forgeries being found. And uh, <laughs> if only one of them already could give him 18 months, now yeah, multiply by the number of forgeries. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it uh, works like that. But it, also, don't forget, uh, I quickly looked up uh, in the closing submissions because, again, in the Dropbox, you can find all that stuff. Um, already at the start of um, uh, the, because the 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 the, the paper um, closing submissions of uh, Copa in this case, they have a paragraph paragraph number three. Now I, this is just too good to to not read it for uh, for all of you. Doctor Wright has been shown to have lied on an extraordinary scale, and it is difficult to think of a precedent for what he has done. He has invented an entire biographical biographical history, producing one tranche after another of forged documents to support it. Even when the extent of dishonesty and forgery was exposed to him in cross-examination, he doubled down, 
forging further documents during the trial, blaming a litany of characters, asserting implausible technical excuses and suggesting a fast and ever-growing conspiracy to frame him, all in an effort to evade his own responsibility. His developing excuses became comical at times. Yeah, that was true. Mm. But... Didn't they just? Yeah. But as was made clear in opening, Dr. Wright's conduct is no laughing matter. He used his time in the witness box to defame, blame and attack anyone he could identify to defend his position, including even his own expert witnesses. And the undersigned, you might remember from the previous episode. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Your moment of fame, yes. (laughs) Yeah, my five seconds of fame in the trial. (laughs) Okay, and a series, but now it's becoming uh, important, and a series of law firms previously engaged by him. In short, he has attempted a very serious fraud upon the court. Now, and here we go, Mark. To give fair warning... COPA will ask after judgment that the papers be referred to the Director of Public Prosecutions for consideration of prosecution for the offenses of perjury and perverting the course of justice. So it's not only um, Justice Meller that is very likely, and uh, then I can even refer to, uh, to the to closing submissions of the developers in this case, the Bitcoin uh, core developers, they also, uh, well, <laughs> more than uh, vaguely, uh, they clearly hint, uh, Justice Meller, you can do this. You can uh, uh, forward mm. to uh, the director of uh, public prosecution. And here, COPA, COPA itself, is saying, we will ask after judgment that the papers be referred to the director of uh, Public prosecutions, so they're not going to even wait for an um, uh, for the for the judge. Yeah, they're going to wait for the judgment, but uh, yeah. uh, they're going to do it by themselves. Whatever and that, 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 yeah, whatever happens, it, it's it's going to happen. If Meller is not doing it, then Copa will do it. But it, it, most likely, they will now, yeah, either join forces or Meller will do it, and then Copa will say, yeah, okay, that's enough uh, for us, uh, or they will just uh, mm-hmm. g- give support to that. Um, uh, to that reference to the to the public prosecution uh, services. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I mean I think we know we're we're pretty sure what the judgment is going to say, and I I, I don't I can't imagine. Well, I mean maybe in the judgment he will mention any any potential uh, moves towards uh, criminal prosecution. We'll have to wait and see on that, or it might be done separately. But that is the thing that's going to be... Now we know what the verdict is, that's going to be the most telling thing as to what happens after mm. that, uh, what happens after the ruling comes down. So, I mean, it, it's it's difficult to say because we don't know where that is going to go. But let's assume that, um, you know, let, let's, let's assume that one of two things happens. Either he gets prosecuted is found guilty and goes to jail so we know what his future is there but let's say that doesn't happen what do you see craig wright's future being now that he has lost this case assuming he doesn't go to prison hmm. yeah that's a that's a good one um it it mostly depends on uh if he still finds uh, support with uh, the people that uh, were supporting him mostly financially which is uh, of course calvin air he uh, well sort of pulled the plug on Craig Wright. On the other hand, we are not one hundred percent sure about that, because um, mm. what I think that most likely what has happened is that uh, Craig Wright has been selling his shares in Enchain uh, last year around September to be able to continue with these uh, cases uh, in full force with uh, still an. Uh, rather massive amount of uh, of lawyers that he uh, has gathered. Well, that's, a, by the way, also a little, for me, a little bit of a surprising uh, element that uh, Shoesmith did not, uh, no, yeah, pull an, uh, a, a, what was it, Aton, Aton Klutz, I think they were called, the, the Andrew Sommer, you remember, in, uh, in, in Australia, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, when they found Did-tune. all those forgeries, uh, when the ATO found all those forgeries, then... Uh, Andrew Sommer said, yeah, sorry, under these circumstances, I cannot work for you anymore. And um, I'm going to 
terminate my engagement with you, your wife, and all your companies uh, uh, immediately. Yeah. No, and he did that uh, the, the next uh, Monday morning uh, from uh, with an official letter from uh, from office. Um, but uh, yeah, Shoesmith uh, decided to uh, to continue with him. Uh, they got a compliment from uh, from Bird and Bird that uh, that they did that. Uh, uh, they were not to blame in this uh, in this whole process. That was, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> in one way, you can see that there's a little bit of sarcasm <laughs> in uh, in a sense. <laughs> English, uh, the English way of uh, having a humoristic uh, poke uh, to the other side of the of the room. Mm-hmm. Um, on the other hand, it, it's probably true. Uh, Shoesmith has been uh, doing things rather properly uh, so far. They uh, they had to. Yeah, wriggle themselves between all those forgeries and uh, find their way in uh, defending uh-huh. Craig Wright, and they did that. Just in uh, magic. Yeah, no, yeah, they did it. They did a good job under de- under tough circumstances. Yeah, 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 but it, 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 I seriously mean that. I mean, the moment that Grabener is trying to bring Madden in an uh, in, in, in an, a certain daylight, as if he has been, yeah, not acting professionally. In his cooperation with Bird and Bird, having a, I mean, that is exactly their role. I mean, it is their role to to yeah, guard. That's what they pay yeah, to do. Yeah, but even for the for the most, uh, don't forget, uh, even the even the most horrible criminal has a right for a fair trial, and it means that you cannot mm-hmm. like the person, you hate what he has been doing, but still he has the right on yeah proper. Uh, proper defense against accusations and and that is what Shoesmith has been doing and uh, uh, at the moment that they think that the procedure of uh, exposing forgeries has not been according the the law has been uh, then it is their role to bring that on the table so uh, Justice Meller has been uh, will be forced to say something about it and that that they did pretty well and then they don't have to take mm. responsibility for the forgeries but then they take no nay, but then they take responsibility for the procedure of uh yeah. how those forgeries should be should be judged no and i have no issues with that and um uh, yeah then um Shoesmith can still do their work uh, <laughs> and bill <laughs> Calvin Air or whoever uh, for for it with uh, with dry eyes, uh, and, and, and they don't have to be ashamed of them uh, of themselves. When I think about Craig Wright's future, let's suggest he doesn't go to jail. I think a lot of what will happen depends on what the in, injunction slash relief is in the judgment, because if the ruling is totally on Copa's side and it says, yeah, Craig Wright cannot call himself Satoshi, he can't litigate as Satoshi, he's not allowed to carry on this 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 agenda he's got of, of trying to, the, these um, slap lawsuits and, and pursuing his vendetta against all and sundry who who don't like him and who oppose him in some in some faction. Um if the judge, if judge, if Justice Miller rules like that, then he's totally finished. There's nothing else he can do. But if he's given any leeway whatsoever, he will take that to continue what he is attempting to do. So for mm. me, what where he goes from here depends almost solely, actually. Now I think about it, on what Justice Miller says should happen. So that that's the first aspect of it. I, I think that will dictate where he goes from there. And I wonder if that will also. De- um, impact any appeal that he makes, which is something we haven't discussed yet. Now, Justice Miller mm. said that he is allowed up to twenty-one days to appeal the judgment after it's uh, after it's handed down. I think, and this point, I think we made at the time when it came to the LaTeX files being put in and Craig Wright being allowed his his extra evidence on at least one occasion and the trial being delayed on the back of it. That was, I think we, we, we said at the time, Justice Miller giving Craig Wright enough rope to hang himself with because he was giving him mm, leeway. Mm. He was he mm. was saying that, you know what, justice, like, justice has to be done. Like, if, if we have to allow, if we possibly can, we have to allow new evidence in to be fair mm. to the defendant. And I totally agree with that. And I think in doing that and in delaying the trial, and in the autism um, adjustments they made and all this sort of things, they pandered to him quite a significant amount, potentially in order that he couldn't appeal anything because 
He can't appeal yeah. that he was hard done by. Um, and depending on how harsh the ruling is, there's not going to be much that he can appeal because it's going to seem so overwhelming that the only things they could appeal are going to be tiny, small, little insignificant things that wouldn't have amounted to a hill of beans when it comes to the final verdict. So I I fully expect him to appeal because he he's kind of got nothing to lose apart from a bit more money and everything to gain by appealing. So I'm sure they will. But I'll be fascinated to see what grounds they have because Justice Miller has been very, very clever in allowing Craig Wright a lot of leeway so when it comes to the appeal, he can't say, I wasn't given this, I wasn't given that. There's not a great deal he really can say. No. Yeah, no, true. And again, it depends uh, probably also mostly on his financial situation. So mm -hmm. as long as yeah. he is uh, either having um, his shares uh, to sell or that uh, that uh, is bringing in some uh, some money. But what we can also uh, say is that uh, he will still, yeah, yeah, he will still have support of uh, of his fan club uh, because that is also what I prepared quickly for this uh, for this episode. Is that mm -hmm. uh, I will just just for the fun of it, uh, I will read. Uh, I found two tweets that I found a bit telling, a bit. Uh, um, yeah, the the the, the mood in, in in the BSV fan club and and, and the Greg Wright uh, apologists uh, 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 club. Uh, one of the guys is called uh, Oudekaars. He's a long long standing hardcore fan of Craig Wright. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, for example, uh, the judge fucked up. In my opinion, on the uh, on the one hand, I'm surprised, and on the other, perhaps we should uh, have seen it coming. In my opinion, Craig is Satoshi, but who cares about my opinion? Now that is a, b a bit of a defeatism, uh, I think uh, I can call it. Uh, on the other hand, he, he shows that he still supports the narrative that Craig is, is Satoshi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it only makes me sad uh, reading that. But another angle, which I also found quite interesting, is uh, from a guy called Daniel Street. And he says that Craig may not have been declared Satoshi, but BSV is still Bitcoin. Now, that is also an angle where we can see that um, uh, the BSV project, when it does not have the, uh, the Satoshi uh, moniker or label anymore, uh, uh, then there will still be support for yeah, that project to continue. Now, yeah, is Craig then still a an, 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 yeah, spiritual leader of that project? Uh, yes or no? That is... Uh, the next uh, question, what I also found interesting, but that was mentioned during the closing uh, submissions by uh, Grabener. Mm -hmm. um, and and now, yeah, excuse me that I'm, I might not properly explain it, but what I found interesting, I think at some point it was mentioned that when Craig Wright is uh, uh, in, in, I, I think it, it he gave an example of walking in a park he was in a park and he had a few listeners and he is saying i am satoshi nakamoto is that freedom of speech can he still do such a thing without harming really really harming people but when part of his uh, uh, identity yeah without really defrauding people but when he still feels it is part of my identity that i call myself satoshi nakamoto uh, would he still be allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, I found that from, from a legal view standpoint uh, also quite interesting. Uh, what can we expect? What uh, what Justice Mellor is going to say uh, about those uh, things? Because of course we need to stop the fraud, but do we still need to stop uh, Craig Wright's uh, no, yeah, self-respect or what? Uh, what? Uh, yeah, how do you call Free, it? Freedom uh, of speech, isn't it? Sort of freedom of speech, mm. yeah, the sort of, uh, what do you think is your identity? I mean, I would not want to uh, identify myself with, uh, for example, uh, the Easter Bunny, but some people have that type of thing uh, that they want to walk around and say that they are something or somebody, mm. uh, what they are clearly uh, are not. But if they think that is part of their uh, identity to, no, yeah, to showcase themselves like that, should this lawsuit end that forever or make it a punish, punishable behavior or not i mean now yeah, that f from a legal angle i find it a little bit interesting mm -hmm. to see what uh, justice Mellor is going to make that uh, of that in the uh, end ruling yeah certainly 
it's funny you should have mentioned the, the comments from the BSV camp because I've noticed a bit of a split, actually. There's been some that have been like... Yeah, it, it's a fair cop. You know what? He wasn't fair enough. We take it and we move on. There's a bit more like that. And some that are just heads in the sand. You're all wrong. He is Satoshi. And there's one that I found. I'm not going to read this guy's name out. He doesn't, doesn't deserve the credit, if you can call it credit. <laughs> but he said, Jesus, Socrates, Galileo, Tesla are now right. They all share the same story. One day the world will learn. For now the world will get what they deserve. And it's just those kinds of yeah. comments, like the pedestal yeah, yeah, they yeah. put this guy on and he just fails them time after time after time. And I just think, why do you why do you follow? What does he owe you? What do you owe him? I, I don't understand how it works. But this is this is something that's baffled me since the first podcast that we ever did uh, is yeah. the mindset of these fans. And that's something that we'll never, ever be able to fathom, I think. No, um, yeah. So... Yeah. We'll we'll start to wrap things up. Um, I want to certainly end on some thank yous because, I mean, we've been... It, it feels like we're coming to an end for obvious reasons, even though it's kind of a weird one because we haven't got the final ruling. There's still more to come, but with the, with the ruling itself, this is what we waited for. We waited for Justice Meller to say, you're not Satoshi, and that's what we got. So we have to... <laughs> kind of move on as though you know that that is the end point the end game even though it's like a kind of premature end um mm. but given that we have got that victory i think we need to uh start winding the whole thing down if you like as we mentioned we would we would be a, a few months ago so i think we need to start by thanking oddly craig wright for threatening <laughs> square as it was back then which led to copa taking the action against him that it did had it not been for him threatening them the, threatening them with those cease and desist letters they wouldn't have done this so <laughs> you've got to thank him for that and yeah. in turn we obviously have to thank Copa for standing up to Craig Wright and for taking the fight to him for a change after all the frivolous and personally and financially ruinous lawsuits He's, he, he, he started on other people. And it's not even what he did. It's what his backers did. It's the it's the nature with which, for example, Calvin Air went after Hodenort and the disgusting level of intrusion that they perpetrated on his life. Um, unforgivable, I think. I think. So yep. we have to thank Coper for standing up to Craig Wright in that manner and for going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, especially when you think about the bottomless resources he seemed to have at the time. Mm. Um, huge thanks to Bird and Bird uh, on Copa's behalf and to McFarlane's on the developer's behalf, who all did amazing work um, th through the, the diligence they did on Craig Wright's history, which, I mean, as we know, is deep and is a deep and sometimes dark well into which to dip your hand. Um, as well as handling all the contemporary forgeries that came in <laughs> on a weekly basis, it seemed at some point. Um, yeah. They were, I mean, they, they've done the work that we've done and then some. Um, it's been the same kind of work, but obviously to a much greater degree. Yet. So, so thank you to them. Um, I think we need to thank uh, Patrick Madden for his... I'm going to say his delightful forensics reports, which gave us some huge <laughs>, laughs along the way. Uh, of course, yeah. ably, ably written by Bird and Bird, naturally. Um, and also Craig Wright's forensics experts who agreed, as we know, with virtually all of Patrick Madden's findings, which, again, uh, makes the whole thing that Patrick Madden is a fraud, whatever, ridiculous, because Craig Wright's own experts agreed with him <laughs> from beginning to end, more or less. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that that undermines that argument so so thank you to him um thank you as well i think to ontia for pushing shoe smiths to reveal that myob login email because if they hadn't if they hadn't pushed shoe smiths to reveal that if they hadn't said you know what if you don't say something we will we might never have heard about that i, I don't know how these things work i don't know if shoe smiths were legally obliged to reveal the conversation they had with Ontier over that, but I get the feeling Ontier really pushed to
to get Shoesmith to admit that, didn't they? Yeah, and it was my impression uh, also that um, uh, from from a professional code of conduct uh, standpoint, they just had to uh, push it forward because otherwise uh, Ontier was known as a uh, well, yeah, lying or not a truthful uh, party in this uh, in this whole. And then of course, then they want to have. Uh, all uh, stones uh, uh, turned over to uh, to get the truth uh, above uh, water, and then the, the name of Ontier sh- should be cleared. And of course, uh, and, and, uh, the other law firm, Shoesmith, uh, understands that uh, very well, and they are uh, then, yeah, sort of professionally pushed to uh, bring it on the table in front of uh, Justice Meller. And we know how mm-hmm. that uh, ended. We had it. Uh, we had this uh, emergency hearing with uh, Wright and uh, and Madden uh, last Friday, mm-hmm. and um, no, yeah, that didn't end well for um, for uh, for Craig Wright because it uh, it, it, it it dropped another case of uh, another event of uh, fraud upon the court uh, on uh, on his name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it certainly did. Um, I think a huge thank you to the Bitcoin Legal Defense Fund for firstly giving the developers a chance, like even the ability to defend themselves, something that they couldn't have done and something that I'm certain Craig Wright did not expect to happen. Um, And also thank you to them for posting so diligently all the witness statements uh all the all the back and forth all the rulings all the motions posting everything they could online which is the exact opposite of what craig writes not not that there is not that shoesmith shouldn't have done that but the fact that the bitcoin legal defense fund made everything transparent just says a lot about their case so the fact that they did that and they allowed the developers to defend themselves was just a, a fantastic thing um in terms of the trial itself, the, the the month-long trial, we have to say huge thank you to the developers, barristers, Beth Collett, and especially Alexander Gunning, who <laughs> I, he gave us some some memorable moments, especially the unsigned integer. But I, I was thought... hoping you would get there because I was also like, oh, I want to thank Gunning with the unsigned integer and several of those moments. Oh, my God, I enjoyed it so much. You wouldn't believe it. Beth Collett did a, a bit at the end, but mainly Alexander Gunning's en- the, the energy he, he brought to it and the way that yeah. he dismantled Craig Wright was just it was just brilliant. It great to hear him talk. Um, and a very special thank you to Copers Barristers, Jonathan Moss, and especially... Jonathan Hoff, who has slogged his way through reams and reams of technical details and much, much more over the past month or so. It's just been what once we got once we got used to his style, it's been a privilege to watch him, as I think I said in in the first unscripted podcast we did, just walk Craig Wright down these avenues into uh, undermining his own evidence and contradic- contradicting himself on the stand and m- making him lie on the stand effectively. It was just, it was brilliant. And I think like you just alluded to, the contrast with Hoff and Gunning, I think they make a great team, don't they? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I see uh, uh, Hoff as the, the yeah, the, the slow kill. He, he is... Um, <laughs> his glasses up and down and yeah. having his head down and it, it 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 looked like he is not in control of the thing probably the first maybe a little bit of the second day it did he had to find his way mm-hmm. but then when you realize what he has been doing uh, of course of it, it takes a lot of energy from craig wright also i mean don't forget i mean he was mentioned i think also by by Mellor at some point uh that craig wright also has to yeah suffer under the circumstances mm-hmm. but now yeah, he chose uh, to be in uh, a con man so yep. yeah that's what you get be, uh, dealt, dealt with uh, as an as a con man but to unravel and and expose all his lies all his nonsense all his weird stories and, and unbelievable inconceivable stuff that he has to tell it it takes and and uh, you have to have the patience of a yeah what I call a slow killer like uh, like Hoff to to bring that all on the table uh, in in more than a week I think it took him like seven eight days 
uh, to, to bring it all on the table. And he did such a wonderful job there. Mm-hmm. Nou ja, en en de, en de, en de contrast is, uh, uh, almost the contrast was uh, indeed uh, gunning. And uh, he managed to, uh, to get me, I mentioned it before, but for me, the moment, the moment of this whole trial mm-hmm. was uh, again, here he is again, the, the unsigned integer that uh, <laughs> I found it in the closing submissions that he was silent for. Nine, Nine long <laughs> seconds. Uh, I know. My God. I wish I could God, hear that God. again. I enjoyed that so much. Yeah. You, it, I mean... You know, for for, for, yeah, for a long time, for like five years, the guy cannot code. And he is pretending to be Satoshi Nakamoto, who has been spreading code like no tomorrow with everybody who wanted to listen, who wanted to see uh, in public, in emails. The guy could code like a pro, like a top 10% uh, uh, person, Gavin, uh, yeah, coders, mm-hmm. uh, programmers at uh, Gavin Andreessen, who is also a uh, gifted coder himself. So then you know already, if you cannot code, you're not Satoshi, full stop. I mean, <laughs> no question, no question about it. Yeah. Um, for me, at least, I come from IT, so I know a little bit, of course. Uh, I, have, uh, I, have, I, I, I know how that works. Now, yeah, and, and he nailed it down with several examples, and, and, and one of them was the unsigned integer. The moment of the whole trial for me, mm-hmm. and Gunning is, uh, was responsible uh, for it. And then he comes back with uh, C++ uh, for dummies, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the book. <laughs> Just, ah, brilliant. I know. Brilliant. I think that I, the way I liken it, I, I, I think, is going to be something like um, Jonathan Hoff is like death by a thousand cuts. He just sort of slowly yeah. drags you down piece by piece by piece. It's like a, like a boxer that just jab, 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 wears you down. And then Alexander yeah. come, Alexander Gunning comes in and shoots you in the head. <laughs> it's just it's a bit like that. With a, get, with a Gatling gun. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's wonderful to see. So, yeah, so a, a huge thank you to those guys. And I know that um, all the... The, the barristers and some of the lawyers i know they a lot of them listen to the podcast and they they said they they like the podcast so a like, shout out to those guys for for the great work they did and i think yep. one one final thank you arthur i think i i'm gonna take a step back from my lofty position as host of this this podcast into the the background for a second because i want to thank you for the the not just the work you've done exposing Craig Wright um, because we all know and appreciate the work that you've done but the way you've gone about it the way you have been relentless and the way you have put your own personal safety you've shown no fear whatsoever for getting sued by Craig Wright and that's why I've been a bit more reserved but I I just want to thank you and i think I, I speak for everyone listening to this podcast certainly and thousands more people out on twitter um just i want to thank you for the work you've done since you started looking into craig Wright because i do feel that this is this is that that crowning moment for you <laughs> um you've been fighting this fight for uh, you know five years as you say yeah. and you've put yourself in in I wouldn't say danger, but it's getting towards that with some of the threats that you've got. The way you've put your reputation on the line, the way that you have um, put everything on the line for this, uh, I think it's it's admirable. It, it, it's more than admirable. It's incredible, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. what you've done. Um, and I, I don't think, I mean, I wouldn't be here doing this with you if it wasn't for your, your drive, your determination to see what happened um, today happen um this is this is the crystallization of everything that you've been working for and putting everything on the line yeah. for so i'm going to leave the last word to you on this i'm getting a bit emotional here <laughs> because you've put so much into this i think you deserve to have this this last moment uh to to describe what it's what it feels like once again to to finally see everything you've worked for all the all the, the 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 situations you've put yourself in to have it pay off like this how 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 does it feel yeah it's a sort of i think it's is the isn't the word sort of vindication it's it's the crown indeed uh, mm-hmm. on on what i've been doing it 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 is it's yeah 
of course there have been moments that I was a bit doubtful, not not about my standpoints, my my opinions, because my opinions have always been quite firm. Because the moment you realize that this guy is just an, a con man and who is, uh, uh, yeah, bringing nonsense to, stories on the on the table, fa- telling fairy tales, and and people believe it, and I don't. I mean, I've been always been firm about it the the threats the 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 literal several death threats over the years also not nice not nice Uh, several went to the police uh, Mm -hmm. two two or three i think over the years uh that were somewhat i mean i have uh i have two children uh i i i want to give them a safe life also i don't want uh walking them to school and then uh, people following me and harassing me and uh, harassing my children. Do you know about your father? Blah, blah, blah. That, that is not what you're looking for. On the other hand, you still want the truth uh, mm-hmm. to come out. That is, has always been an, um, uh, a big motivation uh, of me uh, to bring the truth to the, to the Bitcoin community, to Hodlnot, to Adam Beck, to everybody who was in, in trouble. Uh, Peter McCormick, not to forget, of course. Uh, but also give uh, sort of education and, and, and um, to people in, in, in well, yeah, what I call the cult of, uh, of BSV. That has also been a motivation. Over the years, I have had uh, luckily several uh, coming back to me who called me, DM'd me with, uh, yeah, 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 you opened my eyes and uh, I left uh, the cult. I, uh, no, that is a sort of fulfillment for me gives me also a good feeling but yeah it, it, it all comes together the puzzle pieces fall uh, fall together on a day like this let's be honest it, it, it feels like mm-hmm. sort of relief not only a relief but also it's an end of an era uh, we are still not finished we are still working on this uh, we are with a book we are with uh, th- there will be s- some projects for several months probably several years maybe even uh, looking at uh, that we are uh, uh, working on uh, two or three books uh, to go f- uh, for th- for this uh, story, and I'm still looking forward to, to do that. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, uh, it's a bit of a burden also falling from my shoulders that uh, not only that I have been right with my opinions, but also that I don't have to push myself. It 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 it. I loved doing it. Make no mistake. On the other hand, it is still an, an, I would not say really an obsession, but you have to be a little bit obsessive and have Mm -hmm. some sort of a stamina that pushes you all the time. Nay, this is also part that I want to bring forward and I can now find a certain amount of peace and rest and zen in it because the thing that I have been fighting for has now been confirmed by uh, uh, yeah the highest uh, order in in the world, which is uh, the law. Uh, the law agreed with uh, basically everything that I ever said, and that uh, this guy is not Satoshi Nakamoto. He has no copyright. Uh, he did not do anything with uh, the code of uh, Bitcoin, and he's just a scammer uh, and a fraud. Yeah, that that feels like an um, an, a nice at least for the moment, a closing and a relief, a vindication for everything I've been doing. And um, what I also should say, and I say that uh, online also uh, several times, don't forget, I might have been a little bit of a figurehead for uh, for the Bitcoin community uh, doing this, but I have not been alone. I have also several people who uh, yeah like to stay uh, anonymous, who like to stay in the background, so I'm not going to mention... Uh, everybody, uh, uh, yeah, only the persons, uh, for example, Crypto Devil, uh, Visek uh, Security, uh, the the uh, Bitcoin research uh, people from uh, from them. And I can mention them because they post online also. But believe me, uh, there mm-hmm. are several more that have been uh, helping, giving me tips. Uh, sending me screenshots uh, uh, if I needed technical help I could uh, fall back on uh, a few people uh, that helped me with the technical debunks that I uh, that I have been doing over the years and um, yeah 
Nou ja, dit, uh, dit is something that I should say uh, uh, right now, uh, of course, uh, also. I want to thank these people from the deepest of my heart, because yeah, without them, I have been, uh, I could not have been doing this also, uh, of course. Nou ja, on the other hand, uh, it has been, ja, um, uh, yeah, sort of nice. It was not a role that I was looking for. On the other hand, uh, it, it suited mm. me somewhat mm. still. Because I, uh, I, do, I have no fear of uh, being in the spotlight uh, to a certain extent, being quoted uh, by the media, uh, being attacked by, uh, by the BSV community, being threatened by <laughs> Craig Wright several times, but he never sued me. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably not going to happen uh, anymore anyway, because, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, they, it does not make any sense uh, <laughs> anymore now, I think. So that, uh, that is feeling a little bit more safety uh, there. But again, I, I've not been alone. I've been a figurehead uh, somewhat, but uh, I've not been alone. So I have also people uh, to thank. And uh, I just did. I, I'm going to end here by saying that I remember something from, it may even have been as far back as the opening statements where I saw someone online, this was intended as a criticism. And it said something along the lines of, uh, Copa's opening sounds like an Arthur Van Pelt article <laughs> and I thought you don't get any higher <laughs> praise than that because it turned out that everything he said was absolutely true so that's about the best you could hope I for I nailed think. it didn't I <laughs> yeah <laughs> I certainly did um, I mean I, I may sound like this is the last episode and of course we have got the, the full ruling to come in June. Um, well, I say in June. I'm I'm hedging my bets on June, at some point this year. And we've got a, a couple of cases afterwards. But, uh, yeah, I think this. Given that we had the verdict today, this really feels like an ending of sorts. So that's why we're we're taking this this sort of tone with it. But, um, yeah, it's been an incredible uh, three years since the the case was filed, and two and a half years since we were doing the podcast hours and hours and hours of content doing this like i said earlier we expected to be doing this podcast about three months down the line but here we are an amazing day this is everything we have worked for and hoped for so yeah and until we speak again arthur i'll say it again thank you so much for your dedication your time and your effort in both your written articles and speaking to me and the research you've done to help us out with the podcast Thank you very much, and I will speak to you again about this at, at some point in the future. Yes, we certainly will. Thanks, Mark. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dr. Bitcoin, the man who wasn't Satoshi Nakamoto. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice to get these episodes the moment they drop. And if you enjoyed what you heard, we'd really appreciate a star rating and even a review to help us get this out to as many people as possible. Our monthly bonus episodes are available to download from our website for a small consideration. And if you'd like to access all these bonus episodes, plus these monthly updates a few days early and other goodies, you can do so by becoming a Dr. Bitcoin supporter. See the details in the show notes for information on how to do this or head to our website, drbitcoinpod.com. That's drbitcoinpod.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at drbitcoinpod and you can email us at drbitcoinpod at gmail.com. That's drbitcoinpod at gmail.com. Thanks very much for listening and we'll speak to you again soon. You've been listening to Dr. Bitcoin. The Man Who Wasn't Satoshi Nakamoto. Written by Mark Hunter, with additional material by Arthur Van Pelt. Editing and production by Mark Hunter. This has been a Contented Media Production.